By 1920, the population of Windsor was nearly 3,000 people. Thus the town continued to grow, but did not sustain the rate of the sugar beet boom. As protective tariffs fell away and global production expanded, the sugar beet industry waned, particularly in the second half of the 20th century. Meanwhile, another innovation was growing exponentially, the automobile. The advent of the internal combustion engine in the late 19th century led to a revolution in transportation that transformed the American landscape. In 1908, Henry Ford introduced the Model T, a low-cost automobile for the masses. By 1914, the Ford Motor Company was producing 250,000 of these vehicles each year. Again, Windsor's location between northern Colorado's principal cities transformed downtown. In the decades before divided highways or even paved roads, Windsor occupied the central location along the best route between the county seats. Windsor should not be the only town in the valley. She should be the center, the hub around which all other towns revolve. They must go through Windsor to get from Fort Collins to Greeley. Roy Ray. The first automobile service business opened very early in the town's history. In 1910, Philip A. Bartz opened a repair garage at 522 Main Street. Business only increased, and in 1920, Bartz purchased the adjacent two lots to the west and tripled the size of his garage. In 1914, W.C. Kindred converted the former Colorado National Guard Armory at 207 4th Street into a sales and service garage, initially selling Nash automobiles. In 1927, the Wilson Chevrolet Company opened next door at 215 4th Street. In 1954, it became the Kennedy Chevrolet Company. No other building in downtown Windsor epitomized the automobile revolution better than the former Yancey livery stable at 512 Main Street. Before 1921, Yancey sold this building to F.H. Niemeyer, who converted it into the Windsor Motor Company, a Ford dealership. Niemeyer hired the leading architect in Fort Collins, Montezuma W. Fuller, to design a new modern facade for the building. According to the Fort Collins Courier, the new facade featured a white pressed brick front with ornamental cornice and five plate glass windows. The street in front of the building is paved and with the new front, the building is the best in Windsor. Perhaps the most remarkable symbol of Windsor's embrace of the automobile era was its street paving program one of the earliest of any small town in Colorado. Windsor completed paving Main Street on August 30, 1921, becoming the first town in Weld County, including Greeley, to have a macadam paved street. The Fort Collins Courier noticed the improvement. The fact that Weld County is one of the richest counties in the state, outside of Denver, and that there is a city of 10,000 people in the county, gives Windsor something to feel cocky about. In 1953, the Colorado Department of Transportation designated Main Street as State Highway 257, a generally north-south road connecting Greeley to Colorado State Highway 14, just east of Fort Collins. Before 1959, Main Street also became State Highway 392, an east-west road connecting Lucerne to U.S. Highway 287 between Loveland and Fort Collins. Thus, by 1960, Main Street hosted two state highways. The advent of four-lane, divided highways in northern Colorado sounded a death knell for Windsor. U.S. Highway 34 connected Greeley to Loveland on a road several miles south of town. But the most devastating blow came in 1965 when the Colorado Department of Transportation completed what would become Interstate 25 between U.S. 34 and Colorado State Highway 68, Harmony Road. Windsor had been bypassed.
Every businessman here has the identical decision to make regarding his own enterprise. Will he simply try to hang on to his present customers, the long time Windsorites? Or will he expand and enlarge and modernize his operation to make it appealing to city bred newcomers? Windsorites have got to think big, because what's coming is big, and small efforts to tidy up the place or remodel a little will be lost efforts in the long run. Blair Mason. By the late 1960s, Windsor was only a shadow of the former Sugar Beet boomtown it had been. Its population was less than half of what it was in 1920. It had lost its major employer and had been bypassed by northern Colorado's principal highways. Yet events over 1,500 miles away, in Rochester, New York, were about to change this little town forever. Management of the Eastman Kodak Corporation, the world's largest manufacturer of cameras and photographic supplies, worried that its Rochester plant alone would not be able to meet future demand. Kodak had to build an additional massive manufacturing facility if it wanted to maintain its market dominance. To geographically counterbalance its Rochester factory, Kodak looked west. The Site Selection Committee conducted an exhaustive search of hundreds of locations, and on June 27, 1968, the company announced the home for its new factory, Windsor, Colorado. With the pending opening of Kodak, Colorado, many Windsor businessmen and civic leaders felt that the downtown was at the very least inadequately prepared for growth, and at worst, a downright embarrassment. A mark of shame as executives of one of America's most staid and prosperous corporations arrived in the hamlet.